Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at calculating the ferry ranges for the F16C Block 50 and the JF17. We're going to use the same technique as we've been using for all of the aircraft in DCS that we've got in this chart here. Before we get on with that, I have to do my corrections. You guys keep an eye, I show all my workings out and you guys keep an eye to make sure I don't make mistakes. And I do because I'm a human and I'm not even a particularly good human, so I make errors. Ferry range, you have two mistakes. One, F5, we're just going to do the second mistake because it's just easier f15 in the lower table has green number 1247 but 12288 should be so i've made an error there just going back here i have the idea is i'm meant to choose the most efficient fuel here uh fuel burn so i need to change that so let me just get the right color there and so i'm going to plug that new data in here oh i've already uh, put i've already corrected it i just uh, showed that as green so the f15 uh, fuel burn rate uh, pounds per mile has already been corrected so the 32.5k ferry range of 1766 is okay and the second complaint was that f5 is not in the upper in the upper table 5094 but 5904 so i made a dyslexic error now uh, now that's already been sorted because that was actually uh, the old sheet if you remember i had uh, an old sheet from the weeks that we've been doing this and i had indeed made an error there and put it wrong there that's been superseded that sheet's now gone by this one here where we've made some corrections we've added these red things in which is the translated data for the 20,000 feet planes and the 32,000 feet planes and it's now been superseded and fixed so as far as i can see everything's working any more errors you think i've made let me know but otherwise we should be good to explain how all this works because it is getting quite complex the more planes and the more variables here is the raw data from the flight sim dcs and the various planes here is the kias that i fly here is the fuel burn that we get out of that jet and it has to be calculated in different ways because different jets have different displays different ways of telling us our fuel burn then it goes into the converted data chart and we've got two altitudes 20,000 feet 32,000 feet the reason for that is that we found some planes just will not burn officially at 32,000 feet a10C will not burn at 32,000 feet. The engines don't work very well. The wings don't work very well. F5 will not burn up there. The engines just don't work very well. Uh, the AV8B, Pegasus, doesn't like being up there. Uh, the Vigan uh, actually does uh, I just haven't redone that one yet, but that'll have to be redone at 20,000 feet. And you all know the reasons why optimization, wing design, and whatnot. Today's planes, the F-16 and the JF-17, they will be optimized for 32,000 feet cruise. So we will be doing that. Remember, this data comes from real pilots uh, in the RAF. So we're going to stick with these uh, generic figures. So what we get from this table here, from this raw data, is our actual, if you like, our gas mileage. How many pounds per mile we burn in our cruise optimized state. And then with that, it all goes into this big table here, and it gives us here our ferry range here, including, if you remember, our fog, which is uh, fuel on ground, which is related to the airframe size, um, it, our takeoff and climb to altitude, which we'll be modeling, and our cruise and our landing all of that gets modeled into here we got a final ferry range and that is the maximum range that that aircraft can do so far the king by a long shot is the a10c at 20,000 feet optimum and the worst so far is the big urn. it just doesn't carry much fuel at the end of the day simple as that um, very bad is the hurry up and it looks like Razbam have watched this video because they've announced that they're redoing the fuel system on the uh, AV-8B. So well, some good things are coming out of this. I'm happy with that. The yeah, Mirage 2000 is um, just a short second. We personally think that's overmodeled. However, we don't know. But that is at least how it is in DCS. F-14 is very good uh, and so on. Okay, we're in DCS now. We're going to split this into two phases. The takeoff and climb to altitude and then the cruise once at altitude first of all we'll look at the just the takeoff and up to cruise altitude fuel reference fuel burn will be turned on we've got two planes set up here one is a f16 c with full fuel and full bags giving us a total of 14,105 pounds of fuel gun ammo is in there otherwise no stores uh, we can actually take i think remove the pylons uh, looks like they've all already been removed. Let me just double check. And then we've got the Jeff 17, if I can find him. He's got 100% internal. He's got three bags, no other external stores with gun ammo. 
We're going to fly each of these. We're going to take. We're going to record the fuel, obviously, as we've done before we take off. Then record the amount of fuel once we've hit cruise. The method of getting up to cruise. There is no. I do not have a scientific method of doing it. I just use it my experience and try and fly at relatively low alpha. I try and optimize somewhere between alpha uh, speed, drag, and whatnot. About 300 knots usually it works out. Uh, that's it. So let's go and do that. We're starting the F-16C. We've got our massive external tanks on, so we're ready to go. Let's do the most efficient takeoff we can do. Go, flaps are auto. Whoa, takes a while to get her going. She's a heavy old biatch. It's heavier than the F-15 like this, I think. I think uh, it was like thirty-five thousand pounds. I think. I think. think mm. Yeah, I think it's a thirty-four thousand pound. Oh, maybe I've got it wrong. I can't remember. Take off. Oh, come on, up you go. Come on, lift. Uh, she's up. Perhaps auto gear up. Right. Uh, I'm going to look at the bottom, the angle of attack, and just find where she's happy with the angle of attack for the climb. Probably going to be around three hundred knots, I imagine. Okay, and 5 degrees angle of attack with bags is pretty good. Let's start climbing, see what we can maintain. As with all the planes to keep the test uniform, we're going to be around mil power, as long as we're off the afterburners and relatively high power otherwise. Make sure if we're flying a straight line because we will be measuring the distance travelled. Of course, we can see the fuel there, currently 13,750, and our fuel flow there. We can keep between 4 and 5 degrees alpha, that's pretty sweet. Rest our ascent right now. Angle of attack's getting a little high now. Starting to struggle now. Nearly there though. Got to put all the way up to mill power now. And we are. Ba -ba 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 -ba. As called to the uh, game engine data down below. Right, we've reached it. Let's check our current fuel. Okay, so we're just looking at ways of recording the fuel level. We can't use tack fuel because we're in single player. We've got this, which is going to presenting to us about 12.9. 12 12.9. Uh, let's go. We're just going to go and have a look around the options and see if we can get uh, a better way of doing this. So, so list. Uh, we've got bingo. And then there should be. Yeah, I guess that's all you got. Oh, we've got total. Excellent. Right, well done, RC. Uh, I was slightly okay. out. We've actually got 12,975 pounds. 12,975 pounds. Let's go and work out how much we actually use. So, 14,105 minus 12,975 equals... 1130 and it's important we know how much distance we traveled here because this is part of the cruise essentially and this how helps um also alleviate any errors i may have made with the optimization of the climb 58 rounded up is 58 nautical miles so we've got the distance we've got the amount of fuel burnt that is that done let me just quickly compare it to the other planes to make sure it looks realistic yep it's in the ballpark there so let's go and repeat it with the jeff power on we're allowed up to mill power, make sure that afterburn doesn't go on. Nice and easy as she blows. Oh, jeez. I forget she does that. Gear up. She's a bit heavier than I thought. There we go. Made it up eventually. Right, now we've just got to keep her happy. So, let's get some speed up. Let's get that alpha down. Wow, she's very alpha happy because the F-16 at this speed was doing uh, about 8 degrees of alpha. She doesn't really need to go in much faster than this, which is interesting. And the feel of it, I think she's going to do really well. She's just riding with no angle of attack at all. I can just fly like this, basically. 
That said, I do want to climb, so up we go. I don't think the angle of attack's more than right in this RC. This is like doing no very odd. In terms of efficiency, I mean we've done proper efficient climb efficiency tests. It doesn't really matter that much. If you if you climb at ten thousand, uh, sorry, ten degrees or five degrees, obviously you burn more fuel in the instant at ten degrees and less fuel in the instant at five degrees, but it's made up in the amount of distance that you travel and that's factored in, so it sticks somewhere between ten and five degrees and it's it just doesn't matter. Alpha's coming down. Yeah, that's doing good. We're starting to struggle now. Not much more I can do to get any power out of her. Just gonna be a slow ass climb by the looks of it. Oh, can't I disable the afterburner in this thing? I can, can't I? Yeah, you can. Sweet. I think. Full power? Oh, I already was at full power. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle this is then. Come on, more power! And uh, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. It's going to be a bit of a long one, but we got there okay in the end. And wait, wait, wait. Stop, it's a bit of a struggle, but we got there RC. So, we have fuel in the coffers of 10,066. So, 10,997 minus 10,066 is a fuel about a burnt of 931 pounds. 931 pounds. The distance travelled must have been bloody miles. Yeah, it's Belt like miles. To the nearest mile or so is going to be... Wow, 72 miles. 72 nautical. 72 nautical. Done! is takeoffs done now we need to go and do the cruise so we need to come out of here so we've got the pair set up here they're at angels 32 asl starting off at speed of 350 ground they are and this is important they've got the same loadout here but their total fuel is half of what it was that's how we do the test and fuel burn is going to be turned off because what we're looking at is an instantaneous fuel burn at measured speeds of the chosen altitude that's how we do these tests jf17 half fuel as close as we can get to it 5871 with our three bags on okay that is our cruise specification save so that note that we are turning fuel burn off for this test because we're looking for an instantaneous fuel burn so unlimited fuel on save and that's going to get in the vibe okay we're starting here at 200 uh that is pretty low but i guess uh we can work with that we're going to turn our autopilot on okay we're pretty much neutralized on 200 knots there 32,500 and we've got a fuel flow of 2750 2750 pounds per hour now the way this aircraft flies it's massively alpha heavy 10 degrees alpha there is no way that that is going to be the most efficient cruise because it's presenting such a high amount of body to the air at the airstream so let's try 225 225 Settled to 225, and we've got a fuel flow as best I can read it. 2670. I'm going with 2670 for that. Okay, we're settled on 250 there. That's near as damage, just slightly over 2800. So let's say 2810. Okay, we're settled on 275 of a smidgen over 3000. So I'm going to say 3000 and 10. Okay, we're starting at 2.9, just clipped 300. I think that's pretty much going to be static now. So that is going to be at 300. Wow, the fuel rate's really increasing now. We've got, uh, let me try and read that it's over halfway. So 3.870. Struggling with 3.25 because it seems to be in the beginning of a power band. So I may have to go slightly below to get this to work. 3.21, so just in the nearest I'm going to get without it just shooting into high power. And it's uh, 3.1. 5110, 5110, which is becoming a stupidly inefficient engine, this GE now. So, okay, that's it. That's the F16 done. It's going to jump in the GF. Now, for the JF17, it's going to be a little more, bit more difficult because we don't have the ability to read the fuel burn. We don't have a gauge anywhere telling this in any of the systems. So, what we're going to have to do instead for this is mark the position where it started. So, I put this oil rig or whatever that is in there. We're going to fly. And once we've reached a certain distance and certain known distance, then we'll see what how much fuel has been burnt and we'll take it from there. In we go. This is far from perfect, but this is the best we're going to be able to get. So let's get on speed. Let's get on uh, 200 knots. We'll start with. Let's get on altitude. Go. Okay, I feel like we've gone far enough. So we've got 5720 total. So that is a fuel burn 
of 202 pounds for 44 nautical 44 nautical so 200 for 44 nautical stop 5659 so we've burnt 263 pounds for 51 nautical that's enough Five 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 three. So five nine two two minus five 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 three equals three six nine pounds burnt for seventy one nautical. Seventy one nautical. But the added complication of having to accelerate, which is annoying, because you use more throttle having to accelerate. We we'll just have to kind of alleviate that by just going further each time. Uh, five three four three. So five nine two two minus five three four three equals five seven nine pounds burnt for hell of a long way. One hundred and ten nautical. Okay, so there, we've got 5,081, so 5922 minus 50881 gives us 841 for a sheer long way, 140. Right, that's all the data I need, let's go and study the results. Okay, figures, so this is the data we've populated today. These are the pounds per hour of the F-16 Block 50 at those speeds, KIAS. We've got the JF-17, that amount of pounds burnt over that amount of nautical miles at that altitude and these speeds directly correlate to these miles per hour at ground speed which is what we're interested in here obviously uh, so we can extrude these through so if that if the f-16 at 200 kias and 383 miles per hour burns fuel at a rate of 2750 pounds per hour then all we need to do is pion take divided by in fact well, i just don't i just do it by the sheet so here equals 2750 divided by that many miles per hour says that we are burning 7.18 pounds per mile here and let's just uh, we'll reformat that in a sec so all I do now is go pion across there what we're going to do from this data is create a lovely U curve of performance uh, how far are we going it went up to 300 no, we went up to 325 but if 16 because it was easy and we can format those down to two digits. Okay, so here we have some efficiencies. Uh, so our lovely U-curve, and it terminates there. That is the bottom of the U. So we're going to give that the color that we attribute to, to being the most efficient. I think it's that color. Most efficient is 5.84 pounds per mile at 5.15 miles per hour ground speed at 275 IA. S. Next, we're going to do the Jeff 17. It's a little bit more difficult. So, the first thing we have to bear in mind is that we now, because we're going to miles, we're looking at miles per hour, we need to convert these into miles and not nautical miles. So, I'm going to go make that conversion and uh, get back to you. So, now we've converted these nautical miles into miles. So, that's now saying we've burned that many pounds for that many miles. So, all we need now, now need to do is to divide that there by that, and it will give us our pounds per mile fuel burn which is what we want for the final document so let's go and get that done okay we've now done that uh, yet again we're here questioning the credibility of the jf-17 clearly that is not possible um, i noticed this when i was flying at the alpha compared to its speed was com was ridiculously good as in completely unrealistically good unless they've developed some magical wing that allows it to fly with no alpha and you can see that being shown here at uh, 200 where any other plane is struggling for alpha and efficiency this is just amazingly good which you know it's not possible we all know it's not possible uh so we'll have to send that back to wags by the looks of things but let's carry on the next thing we want to do is visualize this in a lovely u uh, graph so let's get that added on got our data visualized now the f16c is this kind of light blue so you can see it's got a dress, pretty decent curve pretty much the same as the uh, uh the mirage then which kind of justifies the existence of the mirage then because we were questioning the mirage for being too good and really it pretty much mimics the mirage it's slightly better at speed than lower speed and i think that's because of the high alpha characteristics of the f-16 the jf-17 that's make-believe surely because look suddenly a plane a plane shouldn't get more efficient the slower it goes it's not like a car um what happens is when you go down these low speeds if it's modeled correctly it's, it's alpha gets very high and it presents so much of its uh, body to and wing to the airflow it gets less efficient so hence all of these aircraft apart from the weird one which is the f-14 and that's because it had movable wings which changed everything so ignoring the f-14 you have a you have a bell uh, chart uh, you can see the f-5 bell chart went off here it actually would have peaked uh, slightly above it uh, fast but um and this one just has a kind of bell and then dips again which is, it just simply isn't possible um so that's a shame but 
that's how it is. We'll present that to ED and get that uh, hopefully taken care of. Uh, if, again, check if I've made any errors here, please, because I'm always prone to errors. Uh, next thing is to complete the final chop. Have a chat and then we're done. Sorry it's taking so long, but so the F16 block 50, the maximum efficiency was five uh oops, five point eight four pounds per mile. The JF17, I guess we put the stupid value in, even though I think everyone watching this thinks that's probably not right, assuming I haven't I made a mistake. Of 3.99 pounds per mile. The landing pounds come from just a static chart that we've been given. And we're putting both of these planes in the light category along with the Mirage, for instance, which is about right. So 533 for landing. 533, 533. Next is fog, fuel on ground. And again, from our uh, populated table, we're going 120, 120. Next is our cruise poundage so that is the amount of fuel that we can use on the cruise so it basically means that it's total amount of fuel to burn minus fog minus the landing minus the takeoff and cruise to altitude next we've got cruise miles cruise miles how many miles were done on the cruise and we're so that many miles wow that many miles were done on the cruise that many miles were done on the cruise Next, we've got ferry range, and just to be absolutely sure, I'm just going to grab him. So essentially, that is just the amount of miles on the cruise. So that is basically the uh, nautical miles done on the takeoff, converted into miles, added on to the amount of cruise miles. And we've done this at 32k. So the results are here. Still the Mirage is the king. Oh, sorry, still the A10C and then the Mirage. F16, very, very capable, 2022. And the reason for that is, is it's got a relatively high fuel amount and the fuel burn is extremely low. We're talking Mirage low here. Uh, the good thing about that is it kind of reinforces the Mirage's uh, uh, lowness there. Uh, efficiency which is good the jeff 17 has a well a low amount of fuel i think it's the lowest here it's just above the f5 yet it's almost the best uh, and that's because of its ridiculous fuel efficiency i'm claiming bs with that and i've shown you the reasons i'm claiming bs for that uh let you you guys let me know what you think and if we uh agree that it's no good then we'll take it further up the chain anything you want to add rc or the valued viewers I don't have anything to add, but the valued viewers think you're beating up on the Jeff. Okay, well, come back to me with what I said. The reason is what I said. Come back to me on that. How does that achieve alpha, low alpha, at 200 knots when nothing else can? What's the what's the right. actual comeback on that? No emotions, it's just not a facts. Magic, it's it, not a magic plane. I mean, it has to... It has to conform to everything it else. To yeah. So that tick there should be going up, just like the F-16. It should be just like the F-16, but not quite as extreme. Any comeback on that? Uh, not really. Okay. I was just talking to the stream, but okay, nothing back on that. Right, uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed that, and see you later.